Tonight it's all about the pitching as Johnny Cueto matches up against Rich Hill of the Dodgers. Hill was acquired in a deadline deal and has been tough on the Giants throughout his career. With 12 games left in the season, the struggling Giants turn to Cueto to be the stopper for a team that needs to get back on track. The rivalry continues. Game two of the series next. We're back at Dodger Stadium as we come to you live. This is game two of this three game series Giants and Dodgers. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, another day where you got to get over a tough loss. And we've watched these tough losses. And we know all about the ninth inning problems. And I'm wondering, Mike, if because of those ninth inning problems, if the Giants offense isn't getting a pass on this. Well, they're getting a big time pass. So look, the problems in the, in the bullpen are documented. And they're historical. But still, the Giants offense have been in a big time slump. They have not been able to produce runs. And they've not been able to put teams away. And that'll be the key tonight. They've got to find a way to get the lineup going. The rhythm is so important. You know what? Score a bunch of runs. You don't have to worry about a one run lead of the ninth. Maybe that is what is what this team needs in a very desperate way. Well, however you phrase it, tonight is huge and they need to play great ball to win it. And Johnny Cueto gets the ball for game two in this series. It's always fun here in L.A. Stay tuned. We'll take you to our CSN various studios for an update. And we'll do that right after this.
Jack's Brewhouse Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box. Limited time only at participating restaurants. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. All right, back here in Los Angeles as we get ready for Giants-Dodgers baseball. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission-free boardwalk is open this weekend. 80 degrees here at the yard. It winds at 10 miles per hour. Humidity is 70 percent, and it is mostly cloudy. All right, let's take a look at the Giants lineup. It'll be Nunez. You see he's hot over the last eight games, followed by Hernandez, Posey, and Pence. Mac Williamson gets a start. He'll hit fifth, and it's Crawford, Belt, Adrianza, and Cueto, ninth. On the hill tonight for the Dodgers will be the left-hander, Rich Hill. Hill, a big guy, 6'5", 220-pounder. He's 36 years old. He's in his eighth year at the big league level. This is what he has done this year in 18 starts with the A's and the Dodgers. 12-4 and four with a 2-0-6 ERA. He's been fantastic, 118 strikeouts with 31 walks. What has really kind of stopped him from having a great year is he's been on the disabled list a lot this year with blisters on his fingers. When he's right, you're going to see a fastball that will go low to low to mid-90s, more lows than mids. He's got a really great curveball. It's one of the best in the game. A hard slider and a changeup. And when he gets that curveball over, that is his key. So here's Eduardo Nunez. And the first pitch of the ball game is lined into left field, and that's a base hit. So shall I be the first to say it? Yeah. There'll be no no hitter tonight. <laughs> All right, let's check out the Dodgers defensively behind Rich Hill, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Tolls, Peterson, and Reddick, the best arm in right field with Reddick. Seeger and Turner on the left side. Utley and Gonzalez on the right side. Yasmani Grindal, he'll be in the squad, putting down the signs for Rich Hill, who is 3 and 1 lifetime with a 2.70 ERA against the Giants. So here's Gorkis Hernandez, who's standing in. Hernandez at 313. A couple of home runs, four RBIs. And a sidearm throw to first. Nunez is back. Nunez has got 30. Let's see. Let's see, if, see if the Dodgers combine their numbers. His totals are pretty good on the year. 27. He's got. 38 on the year. He's been thrown out nine times. Well, he's ranked in the top five of the national or all of baseball, I should say. And he likes to go early. Kind of a quick pitch to Hernandez, and he takes a call strike. Take a look at how Rich Hill uses his stuff. It's pretty much fastball, curveball. You're, that's about 90% of the time. A slider, he'll steal strikes with that. It's not really a kill pitch. And occasionally a changeup just to stay in shape. But basically think of two pitches, fastball, curveball. And Nunez is picked off. And the throw is in time. They got him. Take a look at the move. I mean, that is really borderline. You always look at the stride step of the pitcher. And you envision a marker right halfway between home plate and the first base sack. And if he steps on the first base side of that marker, I mean, that's a balk. And he was right close to it. But hey, he got away with it. One and one to Gorky Hernandez. Watch the right foot. And really what Nunez was doing was just going on first break. Hill got it. Nice throw. So two outs, and here's Buster Posey. A little closer to the line, and he beats that out. So Buster coming in at 291, one for four last night. 
He's had three lifetime at bats against Hill and he's two for three. And the big breaking ball for a strike. With Hunter Pence to follow. And a quick go two. That's Field and Cobra. Calling balls and strikes. Mandy Gonzalez, CV Buckner, Jim Reynolds. They're on the bases. Field and Cobra, the low ball umpire with a tight zone. Really more of a hitter's umpire, but I don't really think that's going to be an issue tonight with either Hill or Cueto. Both are pitchers with exceptional command. Tight zones don't really bother them. But Cobra definitely makes you earn it. Time now for our Nissan keys to the game. And number one, set up the ninth. That means be ahead in the ninth inning. And number two, calm down the ninth. That has been a much maligned inning for the Giants. They have really not done well. And uh, the Nissan keys tonight is do a better job in the ninth. So a long conversation between Grandall and Hill. Breaking ball and it's skied out to right center field. It'll be Reddick who's there and Reddick will make the catch. Guido's coming out. For L.A., it'll be Utley in the leadoff spot, then Seager, and then Justin Turner. And uh, Justin Turner's done okay against Cueto, followed by Gonzalez, Grandal, and Reddick. Andrew Tolles gets a start. He's in left. The local kid, Peterson, eighth, and Rich Hill, ninth. On the mound tonight for the Giants will be the right-hander, Johnny Cueto. Cueto, 5'11", 220-pounder. He's in his ninth year at the big league level. Coming into his 31st start of the year with a great season, going 16-5 and with a 2 6 ERA, 207 innings on the year. And for Cueto, lifetime against these Dodgers, four and six with a 2.93 ERA. When you face him, you're going to see a low to mid 90s fastball with two types of movement. He'll cut the ball, give you a curveball and a changeup from a lot of different windups. He'll quick pitch, and he has a little bit of touch on all of his pitches. He can back off and add speeds on everything, so he never really gives you the same. Look with movement and speed, two pitches in a row, which is part of his genius. Cueto, a two time All Star, started the All Star game this year. Five complete games on the season. So here's Utley, Utley last night. Well, he went 0 for 3, but on the first pitch, he singles the left. He's got some ownage on Johnny Cueto. 
Let's take a look at the Giants defensively behind Quater tonight, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Williamson, Hernandez, and Pence. Good arms across the board in the outfield for the Giants. Crawford Nunez on the left side of the infield. Adrianza and Bell on the right side. Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad, putting down the signs. Here's Seeger. Seeger takes the pitch in tight. One for four last night. He's three for 14 against Cueto. Utley, by the way, now 12 for 35 against Johnny Cueto lifetime. And this is struck into center field. That's a base hit. And that'll bring up Turner. Take a look at what Cueto has used this year, pitch wise. And about 75% of the time, you're going to see hard stuff coming at you a fastball and a cutter. Change up his best specialty pitch, and that is an equalizer to both righties and lefties. He'll also throw a slider and a curveball. So here's Turner. Turner won for four last night. 268, 27 home runs, 86 runs batted in. On the ground to Nunez, Nunez to Belt in the dirt. Nice play by Belt, double play. That's a great play by Belt. We're going to make it a Ford right choice, and we should. This is an outstanding play. Nunez had two ways he could have gone with it. He could have gone to second, he could have done this. Step on the bag, and he hurries the throw a bit down low, and a nice backhand dig out from Belt on the first base side of the play. Well, it's really good at first on plays like that. Here's Gonzalez hitting 285. That takes a call strike. We've mentioned this before. If Cueto's going to get a little rocky, it's going to be in the first or second. Slowly hit. Cueto can't get it. Belt does. Cueto covering. Side retired. So the double play. Pretty important here in the bottom of the first. Nothing, nothing.
is brought to you by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Go to AAA.com for more details. Top of the second inning, Hunter Pence will lead things off. Pence hitting 291 with 12 home runs, 52. Runs batted in. Hill gave up a single and then picked Nunez off in the first. Pence with a swing and a miss. Three for ten in his career against Rich Hill. Wow. Mike just showed me on his phone the, the weather system that's going through San Diego. Yeah, they're delayed now. Petco Park, Arizona, the Padres. There's a curveball to Pence, one and two. A lot of humidity in the air here at Dodger Stadium tonight. Great night to pitch, especially if you have a big curveball like Rich Hill has. Humidity helps curves and sinkers. Got him. Not looking fastball. Well, Giants fans, check out our second chance special offer. This package includes the opportunity to choose one of our 2016 special event items Lego Lucille, Giants Iron Man, a Pixar snow globe, and many other special event items, and a ticket to see the Giants take on the Rockies next week. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events and check it out. Here's Mac Williamson in the lineup. So he's going to get some at bats against the lefty Rich Hill. And the question for Mac Williamson is how you hit a curveball? Well, we're going to find out. Strike. The ability to drop that big curveball in on a 1 0 count is really what is Rich Hill's all about. As we mentioned, you know, he's no baby. I mean, he's 36 years old, and most of his career has been in the bullpen. One and two. Ball back. Giants now are three games oh, three games over 500 on the road. They're 39 and 36. And the Dodgers and Giants have identical records against the West. 37 and 27. Got him. High fastball payoff pitch. And I think you get in the batter's box when you're taking your at bats against Rich Hill. And you can't help but have it in the back of your mind about that big old curveball. And when that happens, it makes that fastball look a little bit tougher, especially when you locate it above the letters like that. Tough to keep your top hand on it. Good pitch. Here's Crawford. Crawford at 262. Leads this team with 80 runs batted in. And he looks at a strike. He'll make it his 19th start overall. The blister problems have been an issue. On the ground and a base hit for Crawford. So the Giants with their second hit, and here's Belt. First base to by Brandon Belt. Crawford Tried to hit. drop down on Brandon Crawford. One thing we've noticed about Crawford is he's really sewed up the front the front shoulder problem. He had a little bit of a problem pulling off the ball. That's not a problem anymore. He's keeping that thing locked in, and he really, really proved it on that swing. So the Dodgers with an overshift. shift. 
and Belt takes a pitch wide, 1 and 0. Take a look at that solid front side, really letting that ball get deep to him, almost like he hit this ball off his left hip. Maybe even behind it. That's just a great job, especially when a pitcher drops down on you from the left side. You're hitting left handed. Have a tendency to give. And Belt with a base hit. Crawford is going to race to third. Here's the throw, and they got him. So Crawford took a gamble, and he lost. Hopefully he's okay. Now watch his left hand as it goes into the base. It looks like he really hurt his little pinky finger on the left hand. We thought it may have been when Seeger came down on him. But we think that the damage was already done to his little finger even before Seeger came over the top and landed on him. Yeah, he had a grimace going before Seeger got him. Oh, yeah, I think it clipped his foot. Crawford walked off the field holding his hand and he's out of the game. Wow. So here's Grandall, followed by Reddick and then Tolls. And a swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Grandall at 222. For Grandall, it's not so much the average, it's the power and the RBIs. Panic is now at second. Adrianza moves to short. And this is hit on the ground. And Belt can't make a play. What Belt didn't know is that Joe Panic was pretty much right behind it. Well, your instinct is to the ball. You're playing off the base. You think I can get to this, and he dives and just hits the top of the glove. And you're right. Had it got by Belt, Panic would have been there, and Grandal doesn't run very fast. They probably would have had plenty of time to get him. So the second inning in a row, the Dodgers have been able to get the leadoff hitter on against Cueto. Here's Reddick. Redick for two lifetime against Cueto. And here he takes a strike. Oh. 
on the ground and a base hit. So played it back to first and third or first and second with nobody out. Well, he's getting ground balls. That's the good news. The bad news is they're just not finding gloves. Take a look at a CNI ground ball. So here's Tolls at 349, three home runs, 14 driven in. Chats have not been able to figure him out. And the first pitch is in tight. So we wait to hear on Brandon Crawford. Well, I mean, I, I think you have to hope it's something small like a jammed finger. Yeah. Maybe pull it out, right? Yeah. Tap foul, one ball and one strike. But anything else, I don't even want to think about anything else. Dislocation or a break. This is how Crawford left the field. And uh, big time concern in that Giants dugout. Out of play down the left field line. One and two. Line to left. Williamson's got it. Boy, another solid at bat from Andrew Tolles. And here's Peterson. Peterson. So Peterson steps up. He's hitting 245. Two forty five, though, with twenty three home runs. He is dangerous. Good mistake hitter. And he will swing for it all on every swing. He's one for 11 against Johnny Cueto. Ninety four to run the outside corner both times Peterson swinging through those fastballs late. And the fastball is high at ninety four. One and two. Hill on deck. Four singles for the Dodgers. Back foot slider, laying off it. Also cleans the pallet of the eye. I think he will try and go back up top of that fastball. Once you get a guy to swing through two of them, you're thinking you're good to go on a third.
Got him. Time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. And Thursday against the Cardinals, Johnny Cueto had a complete game, his fifth of the year. Five hits, two earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. He did it on 105 pitches. He was masterful, and that's our Togo's big play. On a night when he gave the bullpen the night off. Here's Hill. Hill is 0 for 9. At second, Grandal, Reddick at first. And it's another in two. So he's 0 for 2016. Plato to belt, side retired. Adrianza is going to lead things off. is brought to you by Bank of America. Life's better when we're connected. No score as we head to the Giants half of the third inning. And it'll be Adrianza followed by Cueto and then Nunez. I always thought those those lids look better on women. Yeah, I agree with you. They are rocking the lids. Those lids don't really look good on anybody. <laughs> well, but they're good attitude lids. So here's Adrianza, who's faced Hill before. He's one for two lifetime. And he takes the first pitch high. One ball and no strikes. That giraffe lid. I mean, you cannot put that thing on without laughing. You can't, it's impossible. That is a fact. So that makes it a good attitude lid. There's that breaking ball that it seems like Hill can throw that for a strike anytime he wants. There aren't many guys that can do that. The bigger the curveball, the harder it is to control. Just like that, it's one and two. And Rich Hill is the closest thing to a slow pitch softball pitcher at the big league level because of the arc on that curveball. I mean, it's huge. 
I think it starts off of your shoulders and drops down below your knee. Got him. And he does what he did to Pence. Well, the Colorado Rockies coming to San Francisco next week, Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And tickets for the series are starting for as low as nine dollars. You can check out the dynamic deal page for more information. Go to sfgiants.com slash dynamic deals. We've got their orange on. Gradually, we're starting to see more orange and black here at Dodge Stadium. There for a while, you didn't see much of it. It wasn't that they're weren't Giants fans here just opted not to wear the orange and black. Oh and one to Cueto. Cueto is seven for sixty six. Cueto's going to look for that curveball and he's going to do something weird with it. I don't know what. Well, he will bunt the no two count. I mean, he'll do anything. Well, kind of weird. Well, it's hard to have a plan against a curveball like that because you just don't see many of them. You can't get a batting practice pitcher to get you used to seeing it. Hill. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Last night, Eduardo Nunez in the top of the third. He had a single with two outs. Little infield hit. Slid head first into first, and then stealing, slid head first into second, and then on the air and throw, slid head first into third, and then the only thing he didn't do was slide head first into home. I was very disappointed. Well, I bet he thought about it. Pitches outside for a ball. Nunez opened up the ball game with a line drive single to left. And then was picked off. Nunez has been a good add to this club. He's done a nice job. He's found a home at third base. Really a, a, a total utility player. You can play him anywhere in the infield, anywhere in the outfield. Asked him, well, what's your favorite position? He says, whatever one I'm playing at that day is my Absolutely. favorite. It's the right answer. Good answer. Well, if you're a utility guy, yeah, that's that's a great answer. Three and one. You look at Rich Hill, he is really Mr. Expression. From talking to himself to flailing his arms. He actually kicks his leg up from time to time when he releases pitches. And a 3 1 rainbow. I just, I mean, the only guy I could think of that I've ever seen do that is Tommy John. And he didn't throw his as hard as Rich Hill. But Tommy John could throw that big arcing rainbow curveball. Over anytime he wanted. 3 0. And the breaking ball got him, and that'll end the inning. So four strikeouts for Hill.
area is brought to you by Lenardi's Market. Visit our fully remodeled store in Los Scatos and enter to win a 10-day trip to Italy. Lenardi's, quite simply, the best. No score, bottom of the third is Utley's going to lead things off. Utley takes a call strike. Utley single to open up the bottom of the first. Still waiting word on the injury to Brandon Crawford. When we get it, you'll get it. Change up just a bit low. Again, it's one and two. Cardinals about as safe a lead as you can get in Denver. It's nine three. A game in the sixth inning. Hey, sixth inning, plenty of time at Coors Field. That's how you avoid ninth inning losses at Coors Field. One and two to Utley. Foul back. Little elevator fastball. Nicely done. Mets lost tonight, so this is updated. Yeah, Miami's still hanging around. Seeger on deck. We are in the bottom of the third. Got him. Good change up. If you just joined us, this is what happened. Brandon Crawford trying to go from first to third. Uh, he takes his left, left hand and really munches his left little finger. And we're thinking that that is the problem. I mean, he knew he was hurt right away and he was holding that finger. Yeah, you have to get those fingers up. Those bases don't move. It almost looked like a dislocation when the way he was holding it. Seeger single in the first. And he rolls this one foul. I mean, there is a, such a thing as a dislocation where you don't have any ligament damage. I mean, I guess that's another positive way to look at it. We don't know. We're just theorizing, trying to be positive with it. But as tough as he is to leave a ball game and to hold his hand walking off the field. It is upsetting. So somebody's got to step up. Well, unfortunately, injuries are part of the of the big leagues. Two and one to Seeger. That pitch just inside. Didn't miss by much. Hit into the gap. Pence is on the move. He can't get it. Seeger will have his second hit of the game, and this one's a double. So for the third inning in a row, the Dodgers have put a man in scoring position against Cueto. A little fastball, not a lot of location. Sort of T-ball right over the middle of the plate. And Seeger. Just strokes it right through the gap in right center. Splits the defense. Not a whole lot the pits could do. So here's Turner. Turner bounced into a double play in the first inning. And a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Lots of room. 
will make the catch. They will not run on Gorky Hernandez on a medium fly ball. If you're a runner at second, he's got a good arm. Dodgers know that. Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez rolled out to belt in the first inning. Side, one ball and no strikes. Cueto's got a base to play with if he chooses to go around Adrian Gonzalez, and he may not do that unless he falls behind here. Pulls this one on the ground foul. For a guy like Cueto, who does have outstanding command with all of his pitches, it, it is an invitation, especially with two outs, an invitation to just pitch on the corners here. If you lose him to a walk, it's not the end of the world because you do indeed have a place to put him. It. He definitely knows what he wants to throw him here. Two and one. I think he wants to get him out with a changeup, and that last fastball up and in just gave him a good sniff of, of the velocity in the fastball. Cleansed the, the palate of the eye. Now you can go with something soft, down and away. Back foot slider. Don't have to throw a strike. Hey, he gets the call. It's. Two and two. Eight ninety twos are right through the heart. Gonzalez turned around immediately to ask Field and Cobra to play the umpire. I think that was a little high. Don't see many high strikes with Cobra. Well, this is where he used to watch Greg Maddox. This is right where he wanted to hit the hitter. Well, he had six pitches he could throw. And he could, especially a left handed hitter. And he could paint you with great location. And Cueto, a, a lot like Maddox in that regard. So Cueto wants to start. Start the signs all over again. And he may be icing him down here to throw that change up 3 2. Let the guy wait, let him get a little more antsy. Seager at second. And the walk. So he indeed does take advantage of the open base. Yes, Grandall. Here's Grandall. Grandall singled in the second inning. Strike to Grandall right down Broadway. All right. And a bit outside. So pitch count wise, forty three. Good middle end hitter. 
He's rolled out to panic. And that'll end the inning. So Grandall bounces out, and again, the Dodgers strand runners. It's nothing, nothing. Mr. Pickle's Sandwich Shop. When it comes to catering, you are not alone. Giants Insider Podcast is sponsored by Max Muscle Sports Nutrition and is live on CSNBayArea.com. You can log on each week as Alex, he's going to talk baseball with players, coaches, special guests, and more. It's also available on iTunes. Here's Hernandez. Hernandez tried to bunt his way on, nearly did, but Hill made a nice play. And the first pitch is high. No walks for Hill, four strikeouts. Three swinging, one looking. That's a foul into the glove of Grandall. Fastball challenge, a little bit of a cut to it at 89. There's a breaking ball high. He hasn't thrown many of those. Oh, you're right. When he misses, he usually misses down the below the strike zone. Throw it again. And a strike. And Hernandez thought that that one was high. Buster Posey on deck. We're in the fourth inning. Foul back. You go up there and you're thinking that curveball. If you're a right handed hitter, yet you have to think right field. It's very difficult to try and pull that pitch. Foul. Heads up. I'll say this about 
Then we have women down the lines. They don't waste any time getting the balls into the stand. A hot potato. Here's the 2 2. Hit out to right, but Reddick is there, and he'll make the catch. Yeah, that's a good approach. I mean, that's what you have to think when you're trying to hit that thing. Buster hit a fly ball to right in the first. Breaking ball to the back foot. One ball and no strikes. One oh pitch to Buster Posey. And Buster loses the bat as it ends up rolling. Under the dirt behind home plate. It's one ball and one strike. Now let's take a look. Gives you an idea of how loose of a grip that he'll have on that bat. Because I mean he's loaded up with plenty of pine tar and stick them. Just a real light grip on the bat, which is what you're supposed to have. The lighter the bat head, the lighter the grip, the heavier the bat head. One ball, one strike. Pence on deck. Outside, two balls and one strike. Drop it down from the left side against the right handed hitter. And there aren't many guys that do that. So, Rich Hill, Johnny Cueto, a couple of guys that are not afraid to mix it up. And that's the approach we're talking about. Go to right. Ten days ago against the Miami Marlins. Rich Hill seven innings of perfect baseball 21 up 21 down and then what happened was. Well this was the big play of the game. Yasiel Puig comes up with a remarkable play to keep it perfect. That night he was spectacular and on that night at the end of seven innings. He got taken out of the game. Here's Pence. Pence loops one to right. Buster Posey is going to put on the brakes. Reddick's got a good arm. The report is a dislocation on the pinky finger for Crawford. So that's all we know. We don't know if this means it's going to be in a cast. We don't know if it means. You pull it out and you try to play in two days. We don't know. Well, you know what? That's better than a break. If there's no ligament damage to it, then you know you can tape it up next to a finger and go get him. It's his glove hand. The only problem is it, it's it's the little finger on your top hand of the bat. This is the play we're talking about. Watch the little finger on the left hand hit the bag. And dislocate. He got all fingers up except that one. So that's what we have. It could be worse. Could be worse. Here's Mac Williamson. Rich Hill thinking that Buster Posey is going to steal third. Strike to Mac Williamson. This is where you hope you catch lightning in a bottle, and Mac Williamson can get a hold of one. 
Well, he's got the power. He didn't have to get all of it to get it out of the ballpark. That's how strong he is. And that's just a bit wide, not by much. I do want to finish that story about Rich Hill getting taken out of a perfect game after seven innings. He had spent a lot of time on the disabled list. And he has had blister problems on his hands the whole year. He's battled it. So, I mean, there was a reason that Dave Roberts took him out of the ballgame, and it was a good one. I'm telling you, Rich Hill is going to, he's setting up Mac Williamson for that high fastball. Well, he might be right. That was the night in Miami. Nine strikeouts, no walks, no hits. And pitch count normally this time of year wouldn't be an issue for a starting pitcher, but with all the time he'd spent on the disabled list, it became a consideration and they took him out. Pop straight back and out of play. There's that high fastball you're talking about. I mean, he's got the slider and the changeup. You just don't see a lot of them because he doesn't need to. He's one of those guys that could pitch high because of the break on the curveball. So another curveball drops it down back foot and a swing through Sia for his fifth strikeout. Second time he's gotten Williamson and here's Joe Panic. Joe will hit for the first time. Slow one ball and no strikes. When Joe Panic's going good, it doesn't matter if it's a lefty or a righty. You're right. And he'll use left field a lot against lefties with good breaking balls. Inside two and all. And Rich Hill thought that should have been called a strike. Well, is that away from the target? Take a look. He set an outside target. This thing comes across the plate in. We've seen that pitch called a strike. Let's put it that way. Also seen that pitch hit out of the park. And he measures that one. And he gets the call. It's just one after another. 2 0, not a problem. A play, barehander. Ah, Roy, grab some pine, Ragnar Lothbrook. Well, in this town, when you do something like that, they actually think that you're they're gonna be in a movie in about a week. <laughs> well, they could be. So tried to come from Laredo, drop it down. That was way low below the belt. The thing about dropping down like that is if you throw the curveball, you have to throw the fastball because if you just keep throwing one pitch, every time you drop down, you're basically tipping the pitch. And we haven't seen him throw the fastball from that angle yet. Runners go, and he walked them, and belt's gonna hit. Makes it bad. So Bell to nubbed one to left for a hit in the second. 
is going to step up with the bases loaded. Belt on the year with 75 runs batted in. Adrianza is on deck. We will see this from time to time where Grendahl will have to have a meeting. Well, you want to be on the same page. If you've got an idea how to get him out, Go out and talk about it. One ball and no strikes to Belt. I think that's what Grandel wanted. He wanted the fastball, but it didn't look like Hill believed in it. So if you're Belt, you've seen a lot of 1 0, 2 0, 3 1 curveballs. It's the time to sit on one right here. That back leg was not looking for a breaking ball. He was looking for a fastball. Well, right now it looks like he can throw that over for a strike better than a fastball. I think you're right. I mean, that's a little backwards, but it's Posey, Pence, and Panic. The three P's on base. With the count of one ball and one strike to Brandon Belt. The hit the Giants are looking for. It's one and two. And there was the fastball from the drop down release. And he got away with one there. Belt was on it. Two to belt. <laughs> belt strikes out looking. Giants leave him loaded.
Brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit hefins.com. Well, the 27th at AT&T Park is Bay Area Unite Night at AT&T Park. Your special event ticket's going to include a Giants Sharks teal cap and a ticket to see the Giants Rockies. SFGiants.com slash special events. Here's Reddick. It'll be Reddick, Tolls, and Peterson facing Johnny Cueto, who's pitched out of trouble in three straight innings. And the pitch to Reddick is down low. Reddick rolled the ball past Panic in the second inning. And here he takes low and in, 2 0. Giants waste an opportunity. They leave the bases loaded without getting off a swing. Here's the 2 0 pitch, and Reddick takes a strike. Quito rocks back, shows his number, and throws, and then another strike to Reddick. It's 2 and 2. Good changeup. Perfect location. Yeah, he got it on his take back step, and all of a sudden he froze up. So he wants to start the sequence over again. Quito definitely calling his own game tonight. Tap to third. Nunez's throw is going to be off line, so Reddick's got an infield hit. Getting base runners hasn't been a problem for the Dodgers. Now three of the four innings they've been able to get that leadoff hitter on. They put a runner in score position every inning against Cueto. And with Reddick's speed, and he had no backswing, he got out of the box beautifully, and not even the magic of Eduardo Nunez can figure out a way to get him on that ground ball. One thing about Reddick, I mean, he's got good power in his bat. He can also move. Tolls lined out to Mac Williamson in the second. Got him. Oh, that is quick. Reddick slipped going back. Looked like he had a little bit of an idea going, and that quick slap tag by Belt puts it on him. And right there, Manny Gonzalez, the first base umpire, looked like he enjoyed that. See you. There's no way the Dodgers are going to appeal this. So each team now has had a runner picked off. In a lot of ways, they're always joined at the hip. Yeah, they are. Line to right, and Pence is going to make the catch. Who is this guy? Andrew Tolls. It's another bullet off the bat. I mean, he is just not fooled at all. Nice play Andrew, by Hunter Pence. Andrew Tolles out of the University of Tennessee. Jack Peterson struck out in the second. A little bit of a quick pitch and a call strike. Field of Cobra has showed some belt high strikes tonight. That's not usually his normal strike zone. Good. Well, I think both pitchers, you know, they're always around the strike zone. He, they have Cobra looking for strikes. Look for strikes. It's not a bad thing. 
Just don't make it a joke. Foul back. Cueto about ready to throw pitch number 54. Got him again. And that'll end the inning. Adrianza Cueto Nunez coming up. Slam giveaway on CSN. Valerie Talley, you will win an Acura MDX if a Giants player hits a Grand Slam this inning. So go to AcuraNorCalDealers.com for more information on how to enter. No score. Fifth inning. Adrianza, Cueto, Nunez, Rich Hill throws. And a pop-up straight back and out of play. One of our favorites, one of our security people back at AT&T Park, Orlando Green. Big O, we call him. Here's the big O. He is a gentle giant. He is. Just don't get him mad. No. Yeah, but he is a gentle giant. And uh, he's figured it out, man. You sit next to the guy with the biggest boiler, and it'll make your boiler look a little smaller. He's very smart. Very smart, Orlando. We see him when we leave the park every night right by our parking lot where we park. Protecting and serving our automobiles. Uh, he's awesome. Two balls and one strike. I, I don't think I've ever seen Orlando in a bad mood. Nope. Unless this woman sits right in front of him. He's a good dude. We've been talking about this series for about the last month that he was coming down. So, way to go, Orlando. Tap to third. Turner charging. One out. And here's Cueto. Looking at the schedule tomorrow, the Cardinals and Rockies play a day game tomorrow. So that's a getaway day for the Cardinals. Oh, 
Something for us to watch tomorrow. Matt Moore will pitch tomorrow for the Giants. Quato taps it foul. And we will be watching. Yep. Matt Moore said, I, I might check it out too. There's the bunt that we're waiting Johnny Cueto to try to pull off but it was a ball one ball and one strike. Our little guy's back. Hasn't done a very good job of. Getting his dad to change uniforms. Well. The important thing is that he's not changing his. The really important thing is is to let those women sit down so he can see swing and a miss two and two two balls two strikes and Quato fouls it back and out of play. Oh yeah. Well, he's kind of ruining the selfie there. <laughs> Photo bomb. <laughs> it's not the first time he's ever done that. Oh. I think he's turned it into an art form. And Quito takes strike three call. He knew it. So here's Nunez. Seventh strikeout for Hill. And now he starts the tour the third time through the lineup. Well, Nunez. Scored the only run for the Giants last night. We showed it earlier. He took the two around the bases. Well, in this game, he lined out to left. Actually, he lined for a base hit, then got picked off. And then Hill got back at him in the third and struck him out. Curveball for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Stay inside it. Think right field. Giants best rally. That's what they did. Posey and Pence went to right field. Might have been Hill's version of a quick pitch. It's one ball and one strike. Giants have five hits tonight off Rich Hill. Four have gone the opposite way. The only pole base hit was off the bat of Nunez in the first inning. High. Deep out of here. At least I'm saying it is, but Nunez isn't as he trots into third. Well, they're going to look at this. The Giants are going to contend that it went out. Chris Bochy has signaled first base umpire Manny Gonzalez. Hang on a second. And this isn't uh, something that. You're going to be charged a challenge for. I mean, I thought it was a no brainer, and it turns out it was close. I think it went over the fence. I think that's a home run. That's a home yep, run. It's gone. It hit off the camera. Hit the camera that looks at the bullpen. You know what? Television screws everything up. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that is out of here. I've been wanting to say that in a few years. That's our replay review. It's presented by Xfinity. So this should be pretty quick. New York. Yeah, the fans here did the Dodger groan. Well, everybody in the stands has, has looked at it except for the umpires. All right, finger bag. You got Gone. it. So Nunez does it again. He scores. It's one nothing. And that's his 16th of the year. You know, when that happens right there, they should let him take a trot around the bags again. Do it again. I wonder if you did it again, if anybody would stop you. No. I think it would be very cool. 
provided you were on the team that I was rooting for. Otherwise, I would not think it was very cool. Here's Hernandez. Hernandez rolls it foul. But Giants take the lead. A little two out thunder. I don't know if you got it all because when it left the bat, I thought it was gone automatically. Me too. One ball and one strike. Normally, you don't see carry in this ballpark at night. You get marine layer that comes in, cools it off. But it's been so hot and humid with the monsoons coming up to the Baja into the LA area. Line to left. Tolles is going to get there and he'll put it away, and that'll end the inning. So Nunez knocks it out of the park, his 16th. He got a fastball up and in. And it is gone. It's bye bye, baby. And the Giants lead 1 0. Here in the bottom of the fifth, Rich Hill is out of the game. Because Holly Kendrick is standing in the box as a pinch hitter. And if you read lips, he said something blankety blank about that pitch. Well, I think you feel that way when you. Throw a pitch, it gets hit out of the ballpark. His line, nevertheless, a good one. One run allowed, five innings, seven strikeouts against a walk. This is tapped foul. Fifth inning. Kendrick, then Utley, then Seeger. Got him. Oh, yeah. He went. Manny Gonzalez kind of liked that, I think. Second base boom. Chase. I think you're right. Let's take a look. Did he go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Oh. You know what, though? If you're a base umpire, I mean, that, that's the highlight of the night right there.
Oh, if I was an umpire, I'd have a list of guys I didn't like. Yeah. And it calls like that. Automatic. Oh, I'd be ripping the sleeve out of my shirt. Calling <laughs> it. I believe that. Utley takes a strike. I bet I could get Eddie Montague to even agree with me on that. Oh, he he had a little flavor to his calls. Absolutely. You had the feeling that he was enjoying it. And a quick go to to Utley. Attacks the high fastball and fouls it out of play. And another O2 pitch. At least gone. Good change up. All right, time now for McDonald's True Stories. On this date, 1954, the Giants beat the Dodgers at Ebbets Field to clinch the pennant. And Willie Mays passed Duke Snyder to take over the National League batting race. In 1955, Willie Mays became the seventh player in Major League history to hit 50 home runs in a season. And in 1959, the Giants played their final game at Seal Stadium. And those are our McDonald's True Stories. Yeah, I, you know, we. Drive by that location of Seal Stadium a lot. Yeah. And there's a little flare in the left of it. Three hits now for Seager. That's a magic one do right there. And I wish I could have seen that old ballpark. Well, it's great when you talk to Vince Scully about Seal Stadium. He said that when you were a broadcaster, you sat behind the batting, or behind the screen behind home plate. You were about 15 rows and you were sitting in the stands. I mean, you were broadcasting right next to a guy who had a ticket. But he said it was a good little cozy neighborhood ballpark. He liked it. Except during the broadcast, he'd have to pass hot dogs down the, the aisle. Here's Turner. Turner takes a strike. That could be a drawback. There's Vin. He'll call his final game at Dodger Stadium this Sunday with the Rockies in town, and then he'll come up to San Francisco next homestand. And the Giants finish their final three regular season games, and then those will be his last three games. This is going to drift out of play. Turner. Seeger with a short lead. Low one and two. Turner. I mean, he's beyond dangerous. When you're sitting at 27 home runs, there's a point in time in, in that season where you you start to expect home runs. A career high this year in home runs and RBIs. Free agent. It's a really smart move on his part. Hit the 27 on a walk. Yep. Year. Yeah, that's a veteran move.
Wow. I don't blame you, Johnny Cueto. That was strike three. And that is Bochi Stank Eye, and it's been for Field and Cobra. Wow. I mean, everybody was moving, even Turner. So Cueto going to have to work harder. the glove of Adrianza. And the hitter will be Gonzalez. Well, give it a second life. It's a ground ball to the backhand of Adrianza. And he just couldn't get a, a glove on it. Wow. So more work for Cueto. And it's the way it's been going. A strike that should have been called and a ground ball that probably should have been caught. So here's Gonzalez. He's bounced out and he's walked. And he hooks it foul. Balls it. in one strike. Up. Ball was whistling to the stands. So he goes right at him with a cut. It looked like she may have got hit on the arm. Well, I mean, it could have been worse. I'm sure, everybody's all right. Two little maybe. ones sitting next to her, and she may have been protecting the one. Two seam movement running away from Gonzalez. So she'll get looked at and they'll get her an ice bag, I'm sure. I went to. Extendo from Gonzalez and he breaks his back. Now Buster Posey immediately starts trotting out towards Johnny Cueto as Gonzalez headed over to get a new piece of wood. And I think he wants to talk about this 0-2 pitch. He's got an idea here.
to the year Saturday. The uh, 29th actually Saturday the 31st I beg your pardon. It's a Star Wars Day to the first 20,000 fans and they'll receive a Star Wars T-shirt Sunday Fan Appreciation Day and uh, one lucky fan will drive home in a 2016 Toyota Prius sfgiants.com slash tickets. October 1st I beg your pardon. When it's time for a change thing speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and repair experts. So the new pitcher now for the Dodgers will be Pedro Baez 70th game that he has come into for Dave Roberts this year three and two with the three two five ERA. Good strikeout total 78 69 and a third. How's he do it with a good fastball. That is a high mid to high 90s velocity and a good hard slider. He also feature a change up more to lefties and righties. But definitely strikeout stuff. Posey Pence and Mac Williamson. We'll see if Mac Williamson will hit against the right hander. A lot of options for Bruce Bochy. And Posey looking for that fastball. He gets it and he fouls it back. Got a little stinger in his left hand, I think. Lost his grip and the follow through of his swing, and that could. Send a little Joel of lightning up your arm. And there's the slider. Out of play. So Buster now falls behind one and two. The Nunez home run on the fifth, the difference. He waiting on the one two. Here it is. Pokes it foul. 98 knee high on the outside corner. That may have been off the plate, as a matter of fact. Good job of just fighting that bad boy off. Outfield backed up against Posey. Chuck Peterson was very deep. Center field. Down the right field line foul again. So next pitch will be number six for Baez against Buster Posey. Two balls, two strikes. Posey locked onto a good swing here about a week ago, and he's really been able to use his lower body as good as we've seen him in the last six weeks. Luis Avalon, lefty. Not close. Easy take. So now he knows he has the challenge. Hate to lose that 2 2 opportunity to, to go on a corner or off the plate with movement. 
And you waste in a bad way where it's an easy take. It's a 3 2 pitch. You got to get in the strike zone. Three and two. And a base hit to right field. That's a nice at bat for Buster Posey. We want to show you uh, it's important that our fans see this. This was the pitch that that uh, everybody thought was a strike except field and cold breath. And look quite had to throw a lot more pitches. He went and said something to field and cold breath and he said and he's saying to Cueto yeah that was a good pitch. He's telling Bochi I told him it was a good pitch. So umpires will. Admit to you later that they missed a call. And it's important that you see that umpires will do that. You know, and it does mean something to a player when an umpire does that. I mean, look, you, you're up here, and, and you know, for a guy like Quaid who's going to play 10, 12, maybe 15 years at this level, he knows all these guys. You have a relationship with the umpires. No. They will miss him. It, it worked out that nothing happened after that, except Quaid had to throw more pitches. He threw six more pitches. Here's Pence. And Pence takes low, one ball and no strikes. Well, and it's cranked up our stress level. Well, yeah, and, and look. So I was mad at Field and Colbreth for eight minutes. And then I'm over it. Yeah, you're over it. So is Bruce Bochy. Kind of. So I'm going to foul off of Grandall, one ball and one strike. A great job, says Grandall, not a biggie. There is an honest respect at this level that you have for your opponents and for the umpires that work this game, really, for front offices and doctors and trainers, everybody who's part of this world. Swing and a miss. One and two. Yeah, it's just a straight country hardball challenge across the letters. I mean, you want Hunter Pence to get a couple of those in at bat. I mean, that's where he he elevates, and he gets a lot of home runs from that high location. Has popped up, and I think it's playable for Turner. That's one Hunter Pence would like to have back. He likes that spot. So here's Mac Williamson. Against Rich Hill, Williamson struck out twice. With his lead. The ball's in one strike. Well, they are going to pound those letters. If he keeps swinging at them, they're going to keep throwing them. Well, it looks good, doesn't it? Looks good to a hitter. Well, you see it so well. I mean, it's just visually, you pick it up so easily, you just can't keep the top hand above it. And at that velocity, you don't have time. Oh, and two. The thing is, is if you lower it just about four inches, he can hit it off the scoreboard. It's danger. Well, you'll probably see one of two things either a pitch in the dirt. I mean, like that paralysis fastball away. Looks like they're setting up for it. 
That's the breaking ball you were talking about at 90 miles an hour, the slider. So it winds up being a three pitch see ya. And that's a hat trick for Williamson. And that had some hang time on it. So Roberts comes out. They're going to bring in the lefty to face Joe Panic. We will take a break. It's one nothing Giants on the Nunez home run in the fifth. Telecast is presented by authority of the San Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. It's a 1-0 ball game with the Giants on top. It's Luis Avalon, the new pitcher. Take a look at the numbers for Avalon 21 games 2 0 with a 4 1 1 ERA. Good strikeout totals 22 and 15 and a third. You're going to see a low 90s fastball, a curveball, and a really good changeup, and he throws that a lot. League hitting 185 against him. Nobody's really barreling him up. Lefties hit him better than righties. Panic came in for the injured Crawford and is only at bat in the fourth. He walked. And the walk allowed Bell to hit with the bases loaded. And it turned into be nothing. There's a call strike to Joe Panic. So he goes right in on the hands with 94, and he gives you a good smell of that fastball, and that definitely sets up the changeup. And there it was. It's the hardest pitch to look for. Change up. Panic out swinging, and that's going to end the inning. So Quaida will come out. He'll face Grandall. It's one nothing Giants.
Jackson Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota. The full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. It's a 1 0 lead for the Giants. And it'll be Grandall to lead things off. Grandall is one for two. Reddick and then Tolls. And that's fouled out of play. And I just told you in between innings, and I forgot to mention it yesterday or lunch the last couple of days. So I'm flying here on Monday morning and who do I see in the Virgin American area at uh, at San Francisco Airport is Willie McGee one of our all time oh, favorites. Oh, it was great to see him. And he wanted to make obviously say hello to you and all Giants fans he's he's in the minor leagues with the Cardinals. He works with the young kids. Pitch is high, two balls and one strike. Well, I'm glad to see he stays in the game because he, he, baseball could not let Willie McGee go. I think he said he has eight grandkids. My respect for Willie McGee goes up daily. Two balls and one strike. Swing and a miss, two and two. That defense the Giants had in 1993. When they had Bonds and left and Darren Lewis and center and Willie McGee and right. I mean that whole defense is the best defense I think I yeah. ever saw. A lot of gold gloves. Got him. Let's go to the CSN studio for a Bank of America alert. Right field, Josh Reddick. All right, so it was a big thanks, Ahmed. It was a big game when this game started. It's even a little bit bigger now. Here's Reddick. Reddick's got a couple of hits. So, Giants, you've got work to do. Two and zero to Reddick. Who else was on that team? So Matt Williams at third, Royce Clayton at short, Robbie Thompson at second, Will Clark at first, Kurt Manwaring. That's a good defense. A good defense. Yep. Reddick on the ground to Adrianza. He picks it, picks it up, throws, not in time. So well, that'll be an error on Adrianza, and now more work for Cueto. Well, he sets his feet a little early, and this just eats him up. Ball comes up on him, and Reddick just runs well. He's not going to give you a second chance, but you don't feel it cleanly. There's the ball coming up on him. So right now, Adrianza scuffling a bit with the leather. Here's Tolls, who's had two really good at bats. It would have been nice to face Tolls with two outs and nobody on, but that is not the case. And a swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Well, he definitely found out that Tolls can hit the fastball. So what does Quitter do? He opens him up with a changeup. The rookie comes up and he's beating you on the fastball. You gotta start slowing him down with off speed stuff.
Reddick with a good size lead. He got picked off in the fourth inning. Just got a piece. Tolls, pretty remarkable year. Started out the season single A, Rancho Cucamonga. Then he went up to Tulsa, the double A club. And then he wound up in uh, Okie City, their triple A club, all the way to the big league. So you start a year out in A ball, and you want to be a, a contributor to a team that's leading a division in September. That, that's some kind of year. One and two. High. Two balls, two strikes. Peterson on deck. Reddick with good speed at first. And Coles rolls this one foul. Wait, it looks like he maybe slipped or stumbled off the mound. Taking a little inventory with the left leg or the groin. It happens every once in a while where you catch a spike, you just don't land right, you roll an ankle. Well, something happened. I don't know if it was his knee or his ankle, but coming out to look at him. Anthony Reyes, Jazz trainer coming out. Here comes Bruce Bochy, and now we've got big time concern. Johnny Cueto is going to at least see if he can get comfortable back on the mound. I don't really like the way this thing looks. Well, we don't know if it's in the ankle, the knee, the hip. If Cueto comes out of this game, and he might. You just saw the bullpen. Every one of those guys might pitch in this game tonight. It may, may be a groin, Mike. It, whatever it is, you got to remember one thing you got to cover first. He plants there with a stride step. And as he swings his right leg around, something caught. I mean, there's no grimace there, but just the, something lit him up. So they're giving him a lot of pitches here. Well, he asked for some more. And uh, Fielding Colbert was fine with that. If you're Reddick, I would imagine you'd get another half step off the bag. I wouldn't expect to throw her to first base if that's what caused the discomfort in the leg or the groin of Johnny Cueto. And you may see him go here. It's two and two to Tolls. One thing you cannot mess with. If you're a pitcher, is your foundation. If you're not able to drive and plant, you run the risk of hurting your arm. And he's definitely feeling it. It's 
So this becomes a huge pitch. See if Reddick goes three and two. He does. And he walked it. Now they're coming out again. Yeah, he's done. Move forward here in the sixth inning. It's Okert who's come in. Stephen Okert. See if Jack Peterson gets pinch hit for. Now Okert numbers 14th time he's come in. Nine strikeouts in 10 innings. He's a low 90s fastball with a curveball and a slider. And indeed Peterson will get pinch hit for. Yasiel Puig is coming out onto the Giants on deck circle. This is not a normal situation for Oker. He'll have as much time as he wants to to get ready. Normally you get eight pitches coming out of the pen, but when you're coming in because of an injury, you're allowed as much time as you want. So Puig is going to hit. Puig in the game last night. Went one for three against Bumgarner. Reddick is at second. He reached on the Adrianza error. Tolls walk. So it'll be Oker taking on Puig. So George Contro has got the call, or at least he thought he got the call. And then Bruce Poach is going, no, 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 I want the left-hander. So Contro is halfway into the outfield, had to turn around and go back to the bullpen. And it was Stephen Okert who did deep, was the guy getting summoned. So here's Puig. Facing Okert. And a swing and a miss. No balls in one strike.
Tennessee have been trying to crowd Puig this whole series on that inside part of the play with hard stuff. And it's another than two. Two pitches he has got inside nicely. As we mentioned, he's got two breaking balls, a curveball to starter, and an occasional changeup. And if he throws a changeup, it would be to a right hander. Balls and two strikes. Straight away in the outfield. Slight pull with Adrian's at shortstop. Otherwise, it's pretty straight away in the infield. One and two. Just a bit outside. Last final spot, 93. Good location with an 0-2 count. Sets up the inside corner. No foul again. So he tries to throw a cutter on that inside part of the plate, and it's a good idea if you're okay, if you're gonna miss, miss off the plate in. One and two to Yasiel Puig. Two balls, two strikes. 84 mile an hour fastball. So they're seesawing him back and forth inside, outside with fastball and cut. Oku does not have a base to play with here. Not with one out. Back and blow him away with 94 right at the belt, and that was his strength. Take a look at the country hardball right through the strength of Puig, and that's what he's going to think about on the ride home. So here's KK Hernandez. Breaking ball in a swing and a miss. That's good hard cutter right there. That's right at 89. Giants know that Hernandez is a good fastball hitter. He's proven that against Madison Bumgarner. But what they are not impressed with is his ability to hit off speed stuff. And that explains the 200 batting average. But he does have some pop in his bat. And another off speed pitch, and it's nothing in two. Two cutters, and a chance to go down in the dirt a couple times with breaking balls, and he will chase. Yeah, he's a hero guy. He wants to swing the bat, no doubt. Ooh. Be careful there. It stays at 0 2. Hero guys don't usually miss those pitches. Wanted it a little higher. I mean, that's not that far away from the happy zone of Kike Hernandez. Got him. Oh, Kurt. Fabulous. Seventh inning coming up.
Montgomery, and it's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. So it was Cueto and Hill, and both have departed. Nunez has got the only home run in this game, and it's the only run in the game, and that happened in the fifth inning with two outs. Corey Seager is three for three. When it's time for a change, Think Speedy, oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. So the new pitcher now for the Dodgers will be the left-hander Adam Libertor. It's 56 game. And he's come in two, two and two with a 3-1 ADRA. For Libertor, 44 strikeouts at 39 and two-thirds. He got a loaded bit 90 fastball with a slider and a change up. And here's Belt. Hey, it's September baseball. Managers can go left and right and right and left, and they can do that till the very end of the game. Well, you're right. The only way you get really caught is if you go 12, like the Giants did with Arizona on the last road trip. Well, fouls it back. Well, the Giants have 15 guys in their bullpen. The Dodgers have 14. Puig is now in left. Toll moves from left to center. Adrianza is on deck. And Belt is behind one and two. Josh Fields is getting loose outside the belt two and two Shift is on. Belt waiting on Libertor. Taps a foul. That's off of Belt's foot. Those big 16s get in the way sometimes. Well, they can't help it. Let's see where it gets him exactly. Schinberger. Yeah. Was not the foot at all. Two and two. Foul back. So Libertor going right at him with hard stuff. Dodgers have done that a lot with him. Libertor likes that third base side of the rubber way over. The 2 2 pitch. A foul. So an off, off speed pitch there. And he had Brad a belt way out front. So this will be pitch number eight coming up. Giants would like to add on something they've not been able to do very much of lately. So a change up he misses high with. Bell can take the closest pitches. Connor Gillespie ready. Payoff pitch to belt. Here it is. Rolled up to shallow right field. Turner's there.
So a quiet out for Belt, and here's Adrianza. Adrianza struck out, and he's grounded out. Seventh inning. With Utley and Seeger coming up to lead off the bottom of the seventh. It doesn't look like. Well, I do see a ball going back and forth. But it may be that Oakert's going to stay in. Probably not. Not with Pagan on deck. Down low to Adrianza. Lopez is getting loose. The tension in this ballpark is notched up. Every pitch means something in a one nothing ball game. And for Libertor or anybody else on that mound, you try to find some calm and concentration in what you're doing. Hit well into left center field. But Tolls is there and he'll make the catch. And Okert's going to hit. Had Adrian Ju reached, I guess that's when you. Use Pagan. Well, who knows? Okert might have been the greatest hitter of all time, but just decided to pitch. Well, I'm not sure if he's going to be allowed to swing the bat here. They need him to stay in the game to face Utley and Seeger, who are going to be hitting one and two. And Bottom of the seventh inning for the Dodgers. Could be a th just take. Which is kind of frustrating. I mean, especially if you're a rookie and you don't get a whole lot of at bats. Finally get to stand into a big league batter's box and Skipper says, I don't want you swinging. Yeah, thanks, Dan Runsler. Well, <laughs> Jeremy Affelt. Two balls and one strike. And who? You see, you got hurt running down the line in Colorado. I mean, those are things that managers don't forget. Early pitcher takes a swing, gets hurt, well, clearly dislocates a knee. Clearly we haven't forgotten it either. Here's a strike. Yep. I think this is just you know what kid go up there and be a pair of shoes do not swing. Got him and that'll end the inning. So Oker goes back out it's the bottom of the seventh it's one nothing.
attention he's getting. So Vincennes, I mean, gee whiz, Giants and Dodgers tonight. I don't want people to think this is Vin's last whatever. I just want them to enjoy the Giants and Dodgers. So I am uncomfortable having been pushed out into this spotlight. Well, I, and like everything else he's ever handled, he's done it gracefully. When you're in this game for 67 years and you've brought so many people into the game as he has done throughout his spectacular Hall of Fame career, there's just no way to gracefully leave because you've made too many friends along the way. Plus, he just took his seventh inning walk. Some people call it the seventh inning stretch. Finn does the seventh inning walk. Here's Utley. Be careful with that inside breaking ball. Utley will lean into it. This was before the game. This is the night here where the sellout crowd was handed out the Vin Scully bobblehead. One Good ball one and one strike. Perfect location there to 1 0. Really have to be careful on the inside corner, especially this time of the game in a 1 0 ball game with him. Utley leads off. Beto allowed a hit to Utley in the first inning, then he struck him out the next two times up. Utley is well beyond worrying about striking out. He got over that a long time ago. Two and two. This is his 13th year at the big league level. And now this becomes a big pitch 3 2. So this has to be a strike. It is, and it's fouled out of play. Hooker threw that at 93. It's got to come in again. Got him. No. He fouled it off of Posey. Uh, I suppose he's going to need a little time on this one. All right, kid. Throw another strike. I believe in you. Meanwhile, Posey just trying to breathe. Okay. Easy for me to say. Foul. So, what you usually get from Utley is spirited at bat. On the ground. Panic to Bell. Nice job by Okert to stay with Utley. One out, and here's Seeger. Persistence Seager. rewarded. Seeger's had three hits tonight.
And he pops this one up. Pence. Two outs. A one pitch out. Oker, 25 years old, from Rowlett, Texas, went out of the University of Oklahoma, former fourth round pick by the Giants. Back in 2012. Could not miss a level. Eight ball, rookie league, double A, triple A. Turner is one for three. Outfield straight away off the line at first is belt. I mean this is a vote of confidence right here. One nothing ball game. Who's Bochy let Oker get after Turner. And a strike and it's only one. Just a, a note on the starters in the series. There's only been one earned run given up by all four starters in this series, and that's the home run that that Nunez hit. Kershaw gave up an unearned run yesterday. Bumgarner and Cueto did not give up a run. That's a combined 23 and a third innings of one earned run. Like that. That's doing it. Two balls and one strike. Three and one. Seventh inning. Left hand rod deck. Adrian Gonzalez. Yeah, nice cutter on the three one. And that took away the swing. Cutter's been a good pitch. I mean, he used it efficiently against Puig. He's used it here against Turner. And a base hit. For Turner. Just over the glove of Adrianza. This is last night's starter matchup. Bumgarner just one hit through seven innings. No walks and ten strikeouts. Kershaw, three hits allowed. One walk and seven strikeouts. No earned runs. Tonight, Johnny Cueto, five and a third, eight hits, a couple strike, uh, walks, six strikeouts, and then Rich Hill with the one blemish on the scorecard, and that was the home run off the bat of Nunez. One walk, seven strikeouts. And a strike to Gonzalez. Gonzalez walked in the third. He rolled out to Belt in the first, and then he hit a soft line drive to Mac Williamson in left field in the fifth. Swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. And that same cutter that. Served him so well. Once again, serves him well on a hanger above the hands. Good pitch. Yeah, I mean, a nice mistake right there. They sent the target away. Throw it again. But first, a throw to first. Gonzalez, an outstanding approach to left field against lefties. He's had that his whole career. Got him. And that'll end the inning. That's a nice job by Stephen Oakley. One nothing, Giants.
15th. You'll see it on CSN California coming off their amazing run at the Stanley Cup. Western Conference champion Sharks are going to be doing it again. Home of the authentic Sharks fan is CSN California. One nothing Giants. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. New pitcher now for the Dodgers will be the right hander. Josh Fields, 33rd time that he has come in, 38 strikeouts and 30 and a third. You're going to get a good fastball that goes low to mid 90s and get curveball, slider, change up. He'll give you all of those looks. Get allowed. 49 base runners in 30 innings. Nunez takes low. Nunez singled in the first, was picked off, struck out in the third, and then homered off of Hill in the fifth. That is precisely why it's 1 0. He pops this one up. And this one's going to drift back and out of play. Josh Fields came over to the Dodgers at the trade deadline July 31st from the Houston Astros. Lined in the center field, but it's right at tolls, and he'll make the catch. This was the home run. That is the difference in the game right now. It hit a stationary camera. It looked like it bounced back. Did you see that white camera? It hit that and bounced back. And that's it. That's been the offense. The camera still ticking. That's what we're saying. So here's Gorky Hernandez. And he takes a strike. Giants in this game have gotten the leadoff hitter on twice. Nunez single in the first and got picked off, and Buster Posey single in the sixth. And a base hit to right field for Hernandez. He's had a he's had a nice night swing in the bat. Well, that's the first time he's gotten a hit. But you're right. I mean, he hit the ball right on the nose twice Andrew, against Rich Hill. Got nothing to show for it. I mean, he bunted and almost beat it out on the first, and then two line drives after that. So here's Posey. Buster's got two hits tonight. He'd like to stick one into the bleachers. He's got 13 on the year. Talk about the four pitches that Josh Fields throws a fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. You usually see that for a guy that came up and signed professionally in lower and minor leagues. He was usually a starter and he learned those pitches. But Fields, in his career, and he signed in 2009, he's only had one start, he's been a reliever his whole career. And tight to Buster Posey. But he's done a nice job since he's come to Los Angeles. In the 17 innings he's thrown as a Dodger pitcher, he struck out 24. And that'll get you into it, games late and one nothing scores. Didn't like Houston. Much easier place to pitch here than Houston. Gorky Hernandez will go. Feels ready. 
and it's outside to Buster Posey. Two balls and no strikes. If Posey could hit a gap here. I don't know even with the speed of Gorky Hernandez if he could score the corner arms for the Dodgers right now are very strong. Posey it's a high fly ball to right. Reddick is back he's in front of the wall and he makes the catch. And here's the throw and Hernandez makes it. Buster can't believe he didn't hit that ball out. I can't believe he didn't hit that ball out. I thought he had a chance. It had the sound it had the, the backspin. Watching Reddick go back and thinking it. And in the end, not even close. Halfway into the warning track. Heavier. Yeah, it's definitely humid here in Southern California. You don't see much of it. Game in San Diego was delayed, correct? Yeah. For a long time because of the storm that blew through there. Mac Williamson, is he going to hit or not? The Dodgers have a left hander in the bullpen to cover any strategy that, well, the strategy is put up a switch hitter. Well, there's your strategy. Angel Pagan coming out in the on deck circle. So. Get back to histories. Hey Roberts is. Going to sit down. He thought about it. Josh Fields has never faced Pagan. Grant Dayton, the left hander, has faced Pagan one time and he struck him out. So there's the history that Dave Roberts has. But, but, but that was in a Houston uniform, right? Yeah, I think it wasn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> so Rick Honey cut out, and he's just simply going to talk about how to pitch Pagan. Angel Pagan last night took an 0 for 4. He hit second behind Nunez in the lineup last night. And I'll say this about Angel Pagan his year this year, it's been a solid year for him. Very solid season. Inch hitter number 16, Angel Pagan. So Pagan steps up. He's a pinch hitter. Joe Panic is on deck. It's Hernandez and Pence on the bases. And a curveball for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Nine hits for the Dodgers, eight for the Giants. High, a hit here, even up the hits. Could add another run. And they would love to add on. I mean, they'd love to tack on nine, don't get me wrong. But right now, one run seems as important as nine. Two. Generous strike. He's got a base to play with. And that may have been the message from Honeycutt. Don't give in to him. 
You've got an open base. One and two. Feels ready. On the ground, this one will be at Utley. And now in the inning. Grandal will lead things off. It was 6.30 right here on CSN Bay Area, the final game of the series against the Dodgers. It's going to be Kenta Maeda, the right-hander for the Dodgers, taking on Matt Moore, the lefty for the Giants. Plus, please, complete pre- and post-game coverage, and Giants insider Alex Pavlovich. The authentic home of the Giants fan is right here at CSN. So, Will Smith will be the new pitcher. When it's time for a change, thanks PD Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. Will Smith, one and four in the year with a 375, low 90s fastball, curveball slider. He's been very good. 42 strikeouts in 36 innings. He went an inning and a third last night. Gave up a hit, had a strikeout, he threw 14 pitches. And it's low 2 and 0. Well, that pitch counter really is why he's been asked to come back up, work again tonight. Angel Pagan stays in the game. He goes to left field. So Smith would like to throw a strike here, and Grandal knows it. And it is a strike, and it's 2 and 1. Grandal taking all the way. Had a good rip, it's two and two. Rob Sagadin is on deck. So two oh to two two. 
Hit into center field. Hernandez with room. I'm telling you, ball's not going anywhere tonight. Nowhere. Well, watch the drive to the pennant with MLB.tv Premium. You can visit MLB.tv where you can watch every out of market game live in HD. Check it out. Here's second in. Second in pinch hit last night. And a breaking ball is high. He's got some power. It's one ball and no strikes. Swing and a miss. It's a good curveball. Especially when you can throw that type of pitch in a 1 0 count to a righty with power. Can't believe Sagan was looking for that. He is looking for something to jerk. There's no doubt about it. A little low. There's Romo. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Another good breaking ball. He swings through a couple of those. It's hard not to think you got a magic pitch going against the guy. That's a fact. You just have to keep it down. Oh, foul. Look out. Total ugly finder. Better than two cups of coffee. Two and two. Got him. And the two curveballs set up the fastball in, and he just splits the upright right on that inside corner. 94 mile an hour reach back velocity. Here's Tolls. And Posey, bang, sticks it. And Copeland goes right with it. Pitcher's pitch. Doles is 0 for 2. He's lined out to left. He's lined out to right, and he's walked. And he's got a Rich Hill curveball going right now. It's a good one. It's got a slider to go with that curveball as well. And a miss. And I'm telling you, it's a magic pitch. Well, he keeps doing this. He's going to pitch the night. <laughs> <laughs> Could happen. He's going to pull the Jim Davenport to you. That, too easy. That didn't count. Heck, you got another one in you, don't you? You bet, Davy. Miss that guy. Anything for Davy. One ball and two strikes. So be pitch number 15. And he got him, and that'll end the inning. Will Smith, love your movies. One nothing, Giants. He just made a good one right there. Oh, it's movie like.
And now for our player of the game, it's brought to you by Honda. And tonight we represent with the offense. Eduardo Nunez in the fifth inning steps up and hits home run number 16, just over the 360 mark. And that is enough for a round tripper. They said, clear the bags, Mr. Nunez, and you are our Honda player of the game. So it'll be Grant Dayton, the new pitcher. Take a look at his numbers. We saw him last night's ball game. 34 strikeouts at 23 and two thirds. He's been very good. Just 15 base runners. And you're going to see a load of mid 90s fastball with some cut. A lot of them. He's also got a curveball slider and a changeup. And he's facing Joe Panic, batting for the third time in this game after Brandon Crawford left with an injury. And Joe's going to take high. Panic walked in the fourth, and then Luis Avalon struck him out in the sixth. Two balls and no strikes. If you joined us late, Brandon Crawford had to lead the game with a dislocated little finger in his left hand. And Johnny Cueto had to lead the game in the sixth inning with a groin strain left side. The 2-0 to panic. And a strike. Nice easy 92 from Grant. Dayton. That's what Mike's talking about. So we'll know the we won't know the uh, the severity until after the game as Panic takes another strike. Belt watching. Panic waiting. Foul back. Challenge fastball at 94. Here's the pitch. Just outside. Oh, good pitch, great take. Or is it great pitch, good take? I don't forget. It was the big leagues on both sides of that pitch. Saved the breaking ball for a little two strike surprise and he just missed outside. Here's the payoff. Out of play. Three and two. And this could be playable. One out. So a fight that panic loses, and here's Belt. Second in and left, Tweak moves from left to right. Tweak will lead off the bottom of the ninth inning. Who's up in the Giants bullpen? There isn't anybody up. Belt takes low. Well, the way that Will Smith is throwing right now, he definitely has the confidence of the skipper. Go by the flow, huh? Yeah, that's what you do when you're mixing and matching. Whoever's running it out there and throwing good, you stick with a hot hand, perhaps. Well, tries to run into one and fouls it back. 
Sergio Romo was up earlier and if he does get up we've seen him at times get up when there's two outs. He's very efficient with how many pitches he will throw. The Dodgers are scheduled to lead off with Yasiel Puig the right handed hitter in the ninth. They will use a pinch hitter and then they've got two lefties and Utley and Seeger. Belt takes a strike. Likely you'll see Carlos Ruiz in the mix. So belt behind one and two. Just a bit out. Don't believe that was outside, just a bit high. Dodgers have been persistent with the fastball to belt. Fall back. So belt like panic in a good battle. The 2 2 offering to Brandon Belt. Let's fall back again. I mean, just coming right out of the country hard balls. That's basically how they pitched him the whole series. I mean, they've shown off speed stuff, but really not even often to just steal a strike. They've thrown it to him, it's been off the plate. For the most part, when they go in that strike zone, it's fastballs. Good pitch, good take. So it's three and two. It this was. is where panic was. Pretty close to a sellout crowd tonight. High. Deep. Out of here. And Belt hits his 16th of the year. That's got to feel pretty good. Well, and he does it at two strike count. And he beats the fastball. And yeah, it feels real good. And there's a bunch of guys cheering for that swing that back down on the Giants' bullpen. Is it right down the middle? Yeah, but it was down, and that's the key. Just goes down and yanks it over the wall at a night where there hasn't been a lot of carry in this ballpark. And that's about a third of the way up. Here's Adrianza, and he takes a strike. Adrianza is 0 for 3. Cannot hold up. Nothing in two. Bam Bam Mullins talking it over with Brandon Belt. <laughs> Adrianza shoots it foul. Kelby Tomlinson is on deck. Out of play. Well, there's your man. Sergio Romo. Get ready, he will pitch the ninth. Oh, 
Giants going to do their best to give him another run or two. for a while he's playing pepper well he's taking as much swing out as he can just to get short and defend Delay here. Every time you see a delay, you start looking for beach balls. So everybody's stepping out. That drowns it. Reset the shin guard. Dayton going back to the rosin bag. Tanya is going to do it all night. <laughs> well, that's okay. Well, Panic saw eight pitches. Belt saw eight pitches. And this next pitch to Ed Ranzo is going to be number eight. So this could e either be a pop up or he could hit it out of the yard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And the dirt, two and two. Brandon Belt got that good feeling in his hands you get when you hit a home run. Especially in a game like this. There's the little pop up we were talking about, and it's going to be dropped, and Adrianza's aboard. So Rob Sagan had coming over a long way. They had Adriaza played a little bit closing out the gaps, giving away the line. That's what he does. Playing too deep. And he was back. And uh, in the defense mode, he gets jammed. And you see the long route. He's got to come in. He slides into it. And cannot come up with the backhander. So that's going to do it for Grant Dayton. Oh, it wants to be a Shinberger. Yeah, it was a Shinberger. So we're going to take a break. The Giants have added on on the belt home run. And we'll be back.
in the top of the ninth. So there's the new pitcher. So Lewis Coleman's going to be the new pitcher for the Dodgers. 59th time he's come in. 2 and 1 with a 4 3 0 ERA. Good strikeout total. Almost won an inning. You're going to see a low three quarter release with a crossfire. And his velocity will be right around 90 with a slider and a changeup. More sliders than changeups. But a lot of sliders. And Parker is going to be the hitter. So Parker at the plate, Adrianza at first, one out, a run in with Nunez on deck. And Parker with a half swing, and maybe he got a piece of it. It's no balls and one strike. You know, it's really not advisable to teach young kids to, to have such a big, exaggerated crossfire, simply because it is hard on your arms. I mean, you're, you're cutting off a lot of your power in your lower body, but. It is deceptive. And it doesn't matter if you're hitting off the right side or the left side. It's not an easy pickup. I mean, he's stepping towards the Dodgers on deck circle. Huntley really playing Parker to pull. Adrianza does not have a steal this year. Zanis holding on Adrianza. And now Coleman's ready. And it's low. One ball and one strike. We're going to send a half inning to the commissioner about the pace of the game. Send him this one. Well, I mean. A lot on every pitch. I mean, it, but it is an expression of September because you are able to use a lot of guys. And there's two more in the Dodger bullpen right now: Josh Raven and J.P. Howell, the lefty. There's Raven, the right-hander. I think it. What's, what's happened is with hitting coaches and pitching coaches, it's been. Uh, a game of routine. Everybody has their own routine. And that'll be a base hit. And Adrianza is going to put on the brakes. And you're not going to take on Yasiel Puig's arm. There's no way. So here's Nunez. So it winds up being a nice at bat for Jared Parker. Grendahl with another meeting. Well, Chase Utley came in just to figure out. What the signs are, the runner at second, so everybody's on the same page. Every pitcher has their own preference to signs, what they're comfortable with. Could be simple, could be first time after two, could be first sign, could be last sign, could be a pump system. Lots of ways to give signs. Foul. Or could be Kurt Manwaring, young catcher for the Giants, catching all veteran pitchers, no signs. Well, he would just put down fingers till the pitcher started. He had no clue what was coming with the runner at second. And to uh, Kurt Manwaring's credit, I mean, Manwaring, a gold glover. Yeah, he hung in there pretty he, good with you he guys. He didn't miss many. Oh, the heck, just throw it. 
Oh and one to Nunez. Oh and two to Nunez. That's a good breaking ball right there from Coleman. Cheat sheet there on his wrist guard. Nunez follows it back. It's a little 89 mile an hour crossfire. I see a lot of cheat sheets in high school and college baseball. And that's because a lot of the most of the pitches are called by coaches on the side. That right there is probably just a little scout report. A reminder of how you want to pitch any one of the Giants. He's going to call his own game. There's nobody in the Dodger dugout calling this game. It is slowly hit foul. So pretty good 0 2 pitch and a nice job of fighting it off if you're Nunez. Adrian's is at second. Parker's at first. Adrian's now has finally got the attention of Utley. He has been getting a pretty good lead. High, second in, two down. Well, I mean, to get it out of here tonight, man, you got to get after it. You know, all the more reason to be impressed with Belt. See Nunez, see what he said. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he got that ball, man. Yeah. I think he hit that thing as well as he did when he hit the home run back in the fifth inning. And in the end, it doesn't even get close to the warning track. Here's Gorkis Hernandez. He's had a good night with the bat. He's only got one hit to show for it, but he swung the bat extremely well. And this is driven to left. Second and back at the wall, and he makes the catch. Brandon Belt. Gives the Giants a little bit more insurance with this solo home run, and it's bye bye, baby. Bottom of the ninth, it's two nothing, Giants.
schedule tonight after Giants post game live right here on CSN Bay Area. Get reaction to this game. Amy G will be a part of that. Alex Pavlovich, you'll have notes here from L.A. and uh, practice reports from both the 49ers and Raiders camp. So the Giants will send out Sergio Romo. So the closer du jour, Sergio Romo, 35th time he's come in, 1 0 with a 3 2 8 ERA. 26 strikeouts and 24 and two thirds. With Romo, you're going to see a big. Uh, Occasionally a high 80s fastball, more mids than highs. Got a high sidearm delivery with a slider, changeup, and an occasional curveball. Two types of fastball. Here's Puig. Puig came in as a pinch hitter in the sixth, and Okert struck him out. Andre Ethier is on deck. So Romo's first pitch slider. It didn't have to be. A perfect pitch because Puig looked like he was taking all the way, and he takes it for a strike. See the career, one for ten with five strikeouts. Posey's target is in, and it's tapped foul. It's another and two. So Romo gets a new baseball, goes off to the side of the mound, rubs it up. Puig staring. Maybe into the Dodger dugout. And this is the way it's going to be the rest of the way. Oh, just outside, one and two. Good 0 2 pitch right there. So he goes down below the strike zone with the little frisbee slider and the no dot. And let's take a look how he starts it off. First pitch of getting in, break a ball. There's strike one, take it all the way. Then a fastball, he pulls foul. The 0 2 pitch off the plate, perfect slider. Good take. And here, down below the zone. See ya. So here's Ethier. Ethier injured most of the year. He's two for nine in his career against Romo. With Utley on deck. And a breaking ball for a strike and it's 0 and 1. Again, taking a little bit of a walk. Just 13 at bats because of the broken leg. And he's fighting hard to try to make this postseason roster. One and two. Taking a walk, thinking about it. Two good weapons Romo has against lefties is that two seams fastball and the changeup. Tap to panic. And that'll bring up Utley. Utley against Romo. Two for six. Base is number 26, Chase Utley. Utley in this game, single in the first. After that, strikeout, strikeout, ground ball to panic.
a strike and it's 0 and 1. Three times he's thrown that first pitch in there for a first pitch strike and gain a quick advantage. Low change up. How about Romo? You never really worry too much about strikes. Can he feel for the strike zone from that high sidearm delivery? And that's unique. Two and one to Utley. So two times after he gains the 0-1, he throws changeups, and two times Utley spits on him. One way or the other, this will be Romo's last hitter. He's setting up away. Two and two. Fastball. Run it back on that inside corner. Now he's got to think. Do I go back in there again? Do I throw a, a slider? Seen him more this year throw sliders to lefties than he has in previous years. Kind of changing things up, or does he go back again to the changeup? Three ways. So a full count. So the fastball. And we've got two seam movement falling off the plate away. It does set up the breaking ball. Three and two. Got him, and that's the ball game. Wow. So, Northern California can take a deep breath. Well, you're right. This is an enormous win for this club, given the heartbreak of last night's loss. And Sergio Romo, who so often has closed things out for the Giants, perhaps time where he has more guts than stuff. But you know he's going to come at you, and tonight he converts it a three up, three down save. Great win for this and club. Guess who's going to pitch the ninth tomorrow night? Sergio Romo. All right, Giants behind Johnny Cueto. We'll try to get an update on the injury status of Crawford and Cueto, but right now it's the Giants two and the Dodgers nothing. Stay tuned. East Sharon's Giants postgame live starts right now.